All right, going to get the pen tool for later slides. Grading algorithms. Statement counting is a very basic form for grading algorithms, where you try to determine the exact number of executions, exact number of statements executed to perform a task. <coughs> In statement counting, when there is a list, its size is denoted with a variable. We'll usually use n. When a statement runs one time, you count it as one. When a statement runs one time for each value in a list, you count it as n. When a statement runs one time for each item in the list and then one more time, you count it as n plus one. If you have a loop inside another loop and each loop runs n times, most of the statements in the inner loop will run n squared times. So let's look at an example. Total equals zero happens one time. X equals zero happens one time when our for loop initializes. X plus plus, well, let's think about that one. Let's say our loop, our, we have a list of size four. So I'm just coming up with an idea. So I have a list of size four. It would have indexes zero, one, two, three, four. X is already a zero. So we do X plus plus, we get to one. We do X plus plus, we do X plus plus, Um, our list would have had to have been size 5 for there to be an index 4. We do x++. plus plus. Notice we had 4 x++. Plus plus. Then we have to go to 5 even though 5 is not a valid spot. So we'd get x++ plus plus to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we have to go to that bad location so our loop will stop. So that's 5 checks. Not 5 checks, 5 times that we have to add. And if our list were size 5, if our list is size 5 and we had to do 5, this statement would be n. Now if our list is 0 through 4, this inner part is 0 less than the number? Yes. Is 1 less than the length? Yes. Is 2 less than the length? Yes. Is 3 less than the length? Yes. Is 4 less than the length? Yes. Then we check 5. Is 5 less than the length? No. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six checks. That's why this one is n plus one, because it also has to occur for the fail. And then the loop actually did not execute n plus one times. One of those was the fail that stopped it. So the inside would happen n times. And then you just combine like terms. We have n, we have n, we have n. This is three n. And how many single statements occurred? Or how many uh, numbers do we got? 1, 2, 3, 3n plus 3. <clears throat> Let's move on to our next example. a equals 0 is 1. a less than length, we already figured out that this is going to be n plus 1. It may be different if we had started at a different point or we had changed differently than a plus plus, but we didn't, so n Everything, everything inside this loop will happen n times. So this is n. This is n. This is n. Here we, here's where it gets a little bit more complicated. This happens one time, but it's inside a loop that occurs n times. So this is n times, sorry, one times n. That looks a little ugly. This happens n plus one times, but that's all in the big loop that occurs n times. This happens n times, but it's in a loop that occurs n times, so n squared. So this statement happens n squared times. So when we're counting this one, we have to count the number of n squareds. There's an n squared. When you multiply this in, we get n squared. So that's another n squared. Then we have another n squared. So one, two, three n squareds. Three n squared. Now I have to count how many n's we have. I'm going to circle the n's. One, two, three, because that's going to be one times n. Four, this is one times n. Five, six. We have six n, so plus six n plus, now let's count up all the 
uh, numeric values we have 1, 2, so plus 2. All right, best, average, and worst case. Some counts will vary based on the data being processed. Best case is the fewest possible of statements are executed by the algor algorithm. Worst case, the most statements possible are executed by the algorithm. Average is usually somewhere in between. So here we have big count. Big count happens one time, every time. This happens one time, every time. Every time, this happens n plus one times. Every time, this happens n times. Now, this is going to vary depending on if we're talking about best or worst. This will always happen one time. Now let's, let's, sorry, this won't vary. This is always n. Every time you enter the loop, we run this check. This big count plus plus, sometimes it occurs, sometimes it doesn't. If the data at spot x is a 5, it would not occur. If it were a 7, it would. So that can vary. There were blank big count values in the list. So let's say best case. Under the best possible scenario, this would never occur. So if it never occurred, its count would be 0. So we'd have an n, 1, 2, 3, Best case, this is 3n plus 1, 2, 3, 4. Worst would mean that statement we're going to execute every time. So it's an if that runs n times. So every time the if happened, this would happen. So we'd get one more n. Worst case would be 4n plus 4. Average is a little harder to determine. So let's go ahead and say... Let's make an extra rule. Values are random from 1 to 10. Now this would have been stated in the problem. You can't just make up rules. But for my example, it would be good to have this. So we're going to say if our values are random from 1 to 10. On the average case, half of them would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The other half would be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we were given this as part of our problem statement, our average case would mean that half of the values were going to activate the if, and the other ones wouldn't. So on average, we would get half an extra n, because this would activate half of the time. So our average case with that rule up there would be 3.5 n plus 4. Usually, if you're calculating average case, there'll be some sort of description helping you figure out, well, how often will this activate? And I believe that's our last example.